Hello, and welcome to the Tiny Human Knits podcast, my podcast all about knitting, sewing, crochet, cross-stitch, and all manner of crafty goodness. My name is Laura, and I'm coming to you from High Level, Alberta, Canada, which is absolutely freezing again right now. I think it's about minus 20, but it's so ridiculously sunny that the house is actually quite warm without having to have built a fire or anything in our house, which is lovely. And I live here with my husband and our pet cat, Shrimp, and our bunny named Oscar. I'm not entirely sure why we even bother giving them names, because I end up just calling them Bunny and Kitty, because we're super original. <laughs> anyway, you can find me online as Tiny Human Knits on Instagram, on YouTube, obviously. I have an Etsy shop of the same name, and also on Ravelry. There's also a Ravelry group for the podcast under the groups tab as Tiny Human Knits Podcast, and we're currently having the uh, Sweater Weather Cal that is going until the end of next month, and you knit a sweater from age three and up, and you can enter that to win prizes. I drew a prize a couple weeks ago, and I think the next time I'm going to draw a prize from the chatter thread is going to be next podcast, so if you are interested in either entering a sweater that you're already started, as long as it started was no more than 50% complete as of August 1st. You can enter it. And uh, so drop yourself into the chatter thread and I'll be drawing another prize for that next podcast. So check that out. Um, it's only going on for a little bit longer. I am completely failing on the sweaters that I had planned on making for this cowl. I was planning on doing like a, a simple intermediate and then difficult pattern. And I had all, I have all the yarn picked out and everything. I just, don't listen to me when I say I'm going to do a certain thing next, because I'm usually full of baloney. Um, I even have sweaters planned now that I had have had no previous mention before. I should stop saying what certain order I'm going to do things in and just, you know, fly by the seat of my pants like I normally do. But anyway, I have got no knitted stuff on today. It's actually really warm in here, so I'm not even wearing socks. But this is a sweater that I bought the last time we went to Edmonton, my husband and I, and it was just too cute. And I don't normally buy uh, clothing from retail stores, especially uh, places like Forever 21 or H&M. I used to shop there a lot, but I don't anymore because if any of you know, um, I think there's a documentary called The True Cost about what actual effects come from the fast fashion industry and just how miserable the people are who make those clothes, how little they're paid, and how much it's actually affecting our environment. Uh, fa the fashion industry is the second largest cause of um, pollution in the world. So if you think about that, and even if you think you're doing a good job by giving all your stuff to a thrift store or to charity, it's there's too much in thrift stores because people recycle their clothes so often, and usually they're garbage clothes anyway. So to me, to purchase, I didn't plan on talking about this, but to purchase a sweater or a dress or anything that's made in that way, it's not worth it to me. Um, this one was a bit different. It's a little bit more, the company that makes these clothes is a little bit more of a local, it's a small shop. I think they only had two locations in Edmonton. I don't know where else they are, um, but they're a little bit more conscientious about who is making their clothes, but it's probably not even the best. I should have researched it a little bit more, but anyway, it was one sweater in a couple years since I really bought anything from a store like that, but that's why I'm trying to make most of my own clothes now, which is one of the things I really love about knitting, and now that I have a little bit of sewing under my belt, I'm hoping to start making my own clothes in that manner as well. But that was a really long-winded way to say that I'm not wearing a hemmed sweater today, um, but I will mosey on along. I do have uh, one finished object today, and that is a pair, the first pair of what's going to be my husband's Christmas present, because we're not really doing Christmas presents this year, because we're kind of broke. Um, my husband just got a notice that he's going to start having, going to have to start paying back his student loans here right away, so we don't really have enough extra dollars to buy Christmas presents. So I'm just making him a couple pairs of socks, and he has uh, said that he's going to be making me 
sort of a, a picture taking tray, sort of like an Instagram tray, because I've been taking a lot of product photos and Instagram photos on my husband's desktop that he made. It's not quite finished, it still needs a, uh, another layer of epoxy on it. But if anyone's seen my Instagram feed, there's that really, really gorgeous tonal table, the wooden tabletop that I've been taking pictures on. That's a desktop he made for himself, and I want just a small, small tray size that I can take with me around and then take pictures on. So that's what he said he's going to make me for Christmas, which is awesome. Um, I also got my Woolberry Fiber Co. advent calendar uh, last, last week, I think, or the week before, and uh, I didn't open it because I wanted to save it all for Christmas Day because I won't be getting any yarn as a Christmas gift so I thought I'd keep that for myself and my husband wrote to me from him on the box so that's what, <laughs> that's what it's gonna be. We both don't know what's in there. But anyway, this is my first pair of finished socks for him for Christmas and this is Knit in Drops Fable in the Tex-Mex colorway. I didn't try to color or to stripe match at all, and I don't mind that. I don't mind that one bit. So for his socks, I cast on 14 stitches each on uh, Judy's Magic Cast On, and then I increased to 64. And because this one was patterned, I did a fish lips kiss heel, which is the first time I've ever done a fish lips kiss heel for him. And actually, when I was a little past the heel on the first sock, I had to admit to him that they were for him because he, he didn't realize while I was knitting them. But I had to tell him that they were for him and I actually needed to tr have him try them on because I have a couple other sets of self-striping yarn that I want to make socks for him in and I want to have those have fish lips kiss heels. So I needed to know if it actually fit. So I got him to try it on and it fit perfectly fine. I actually had a very scary moment where I thought that I had knit the foot too short, but it was just that I uh, didn't put the sock on correctly, because he's such a butthead, he had me put them on his own foot. But anyway, I knit these on 2.25mm Addy sock rockets, and they're done. Um, I did a little bit longer of a, a leg than I have done previously for his socks but I think it'll be good because I didn't want to have a lot of leftovers and it's cold it's very cold and he has to work outside a lot I also used a different bind off um, I in other socks I've done Judy's uh, surprisingly no Jenny's surprisingly stretchy uh, bind off but this time I just did a bind off where you increase by knitting or purling into the stitch below and then casting that off as normal by passing the first stitch and then moving that stitch along. So it's a really stretchy and it does look a little bit better with a two by two rib, which is what I did. I don't know if you can see that. But it sits in front and back the same way as a knit and pearl would, so it does look a little bit better. And I want them to be really stretchy because he's kind of rough on his socks when he's pulling them on, so that is my finished object for this. I haven't had a whole lot of time to work on knitting projects this past couple weeks because I've been working on my big shop update, but that's done now. I'm going to be putting a couple more things in the shop as the month carries on, but it won't be as um, heavy on the products as it has been. I also have a hoe, and this was a test knit for my friend Rosie of the Pixel Atlantis podcast, and she's also Pixel Atlantis on Instagram. She released a new pattern for a pair of socks called uh, Christmas at Hogwarts and she asked me if I would do a test knit for her, mainly to see if the lace panel worked out well on the, on the sock. And I decided I was going to use a skein of yarn that I bought from her because she also dyes yarn. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. So I used a pair, a skein of yarn from her called Christmas Morning, and I ordered that on our first anniversary, my husband and I. But this is a sock right here. I haven't had a chance to block it because, I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but we ran out of water yesterday. Our tank is empty. My husband forgot to order more water, and I've been melting snow just for drinking. Luckily it snowed yesterday, so it's a nice fresh powder, so... Uh, I'm really hoping it comes in soon because I'm really thirsty. Anyway, 
So this is the sock. I used a, just a simple, it's an afterthought heel and I used Knit Picks Stroll um, Glimmer. I think that's what it's called. I'm not entirely sure. But it's this beautiful red color. I've got some red, a lot of this, and some white that I want to make socks for myself out of for Christmas as well. And I'll show you the lace panel a little bit better. So it's really easy to memorize. I actually memorized this after the first round. It's a four row repeat. And it's just super easy to remember. And it's really nice. And also, I really, really, really love this yarn. So it's a top down, and it's a twisted rib. In her pattern, it's just a one by one rib, but I prefer a twisted rib, so I did a twisted rib. And I cast on 60 stitches. She's got a bunch of different sizes, and there's um, it's really easy for you to put the lace panel on the back as well, of the back of the leg, if you want. I don't really care for that. I find that's a bit too much lace for a sock, so I just did the stockinette on the back. But yeah. I just finished this the day before yesterday. I meant to do the whole like pair of socks, but I got swamped by shop stuff, which is also fun. But I will be starting the second sock soon, but I might be using this pair of socks as a gift knit. So I don't know if I'll be showing it on the podcast again as a whole one because I'm hoping to have it done and packaged up. So yeah, that is my hoe. And that's all for like even halfway finished objects. My works in progress are one. I think I have one proper work in progress right now. And then I have a lot of planned works in progress. But yesterday I finished my husband's pair of socks, his first one. And my husband and I were watching uh, anime, because we're cool kids. Uh, we were watching an anime called Haikyuu, by the way, if anyone's interested. It's about volleyball. And he always claims that he doesn't like sports animes, and I always make him watch them, and he always enjoys them, so I don't know what he's always complaining about. Oh, I've got the urinal thing over my needle. But anyway, so, and actually I should talk about, I have a lot of sock projects and smaller projects that I want to make for Christmas. Um, some for myself, some for my husband, some for my cousin Jennifer. And there's so many that I want to make that I get sort of overwhelmed when it comes to choice and it ends up taking way too long to start a project. So what I did yesterday is I got myself a jar and I got little pieces of paper and wrote down all of the projects that I want to finish by Christmas. So every time I finish a sock or a small project, I can draw a new project out of the jar. And I actually find I've only done it once so far. <laughs> And I find it's very, um, it's very helpful because I actually get so excited as to what the next one is going to be because it's a surprise that I think it's going to make me knit faster or at least like sit down and knit more consistently. But I cast on, the first one I picked out of the jar was for my cousin Jennifer and I think I have three of them in there for her and the one I drew was one out of her own hand dyed yarn because we did a little bit of a dyeing session a couple months ago now when I hadn't gotten my acid dyes yet. But she dyed a gorgeous skein of yarn and it was really funny because she didn't really like it because that's not what she wanted. It's She had an, an image in her mind of what she wanted and it didn't turn out the way she wanted. And I told her that if she didn't want it, I would keep it because it was gorgeous. And here's what it looks like in the cake. So, and I love it. And the really pale part isn't, it's um, half white and half really, really delicate pink, but it is knitting up so cool. Um, it's doing a micro striping. So here's the first sock. So it's like a micro stripe, but it's also spiraling. I hope you can see that, but it is so cool. And I'm really torn because I was hoping this project was going to be one that I could do a gusset and heel turn in because it's our it's our favorite. I've knit socks for her before and we both have the same sort of foot so it's what fits the best. But I think for this I don't want to interrupt this pattern so I might do a fish lips kiss heel. Maybe. Or maybe I should try... I was also thinking of putting in a short row heel but in a sport weight so it would be really soft and squishy. I know, um, I know I've seen that 
done a couple of times. And it looks really nice, so I'm going to have to decide that pretty soon, because it's not going to be too much knitting more before I'd be able to put in a gusset. But I think it's so cool. It's so pretty. I mean, ugh. And the nice thing about her feet is that they're the same size as my feet, and she also doesn't like long socks, so it's going to be enough for me to get a pair of socks like this for myself out of the same skein of yarn, which is always the best part of making socks for her. And actually, most of the people I know have the same size feet as me, so yeah, there's that. But that is my first, well, kind of only work in progress, um, sort of. I'm going to be casting on quite a few things in the next little while for Christmas and for custom requests and the like, but the one thing I would really, really, really like to make right away is the other day I decided I needed a, I think it's called Tegna. If that's wrong, please help me out with that. I know, um, so yeah. The designer is uh, on Instagram is Boyland Knitworks, and I followed her for quite a while, and I've always loved her patterns. But I bought the first one because I had dyed two skeins of a new colorway for me, which is called Victoria. It's a very very soft pink, but it's more of a dusty rose, and which is my favorite pink that you can get. But I wanted to make something with two skeins of yarn, and I thought this one would be perfect. So I am wanting to cast this on so bad. Originally I dyed my um, my old base, which is a 75-25 uh, Superwash Merino and Nylon, but it's more of a... It's hard to describe. It's more of a woolier feeling. It's kind of almost linen-y feeling. It's what I made my pavement sweater out of, which um, I adore. I've been wearing that a lot. So that is this one right here. And I actually did a gauge swatch for this. For the, the Tegna. And um, I wasn't sure about it. I'm still kind of wavering on what I want to do. But I think what I might do is use what I dyed originally on this base and make another pavement sweater because I feel like I need more pavement sweaters but I know two skeins isn't quite enough for me I need a little bit more than two so I was thinking I might use my that's just great as the um, the collar and the hems for both the arms and the body because I think those go really nicely together so that might be something I cast on soon it'd be especially good um, because there's going to be a lot of gatherings and Christmas parties in the next little while, so it would be nice to have something a little bit bigger than a sock that I could work on, just plain stockinette for the most of it. So that is my pavement. So I decided I dyed up a couple more skeins of Victoria, but I got a new base for Christmas because I wanted the Christmas base to be really squishy and really soft. So I put it on a sparkle. And this is a 70% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, 5% Silver Stellina. And it's, I got it from a different source and it's amazing how much different each base is from where you buy it. Because this is so plump and so squishy. So I think this is going to be this one. So I got two skeins of these for myself. I also have two in the shop. So if you're a fan of Dusty Rose... Check it out. I love this color. I honestly love this color. I remember last year when I was working at uh, La Senza, which is an underwear store for anyone who's not familiar. I know it's brand new in the United States. They just got their first one, I think. But uh, we had a line of um, like sportswear as well that came out in Dusty Rose. And I think I bought everything you could in that color. Even things that I would normally never buy, but that particular color I am a sucker for. Um, I'm also going to be starting to knit, actually I'm going to be designing and knitting it, a sweater for a friend of a friend. Um, she's got very delicate skin. I think um, she was telling me she's got an autoimmune uh, disease that causes skin problems. And she wanted a particular 
type of sweater. She sent me a picture of it. It's very popular on Pinterest, actually. And uh, she wanted a particular sweater. It's very chunky cable-wise. It's very cable-y. It's very oversized, very squishy. And uh, she wanted it made out of something that wasn't like a made-in-China type thing. So she sent me a picture and is letting me go with it. But I decided I was going to be using Knit Picks City Tweed uh, in the Erin heavy worsted uh, and this is Tahitian Pearl. I really love this yarn. I've made a couple sweaters out of this type of, of wool and by the way Knit Picks is having their big sale this week. Lots of stuff is on sale including this so and I know I'm not going to have enough from what I have in my stash now so I'm actually putting in an order for some more because I'd rather have too much than not enough. So I will be designing a sweater out of this and hopefully I'll be able to get that done really quickly. I um I always get a little bit weirded out by having to do my own designs, but I'm gonna hope for the best. Wish me luck. I'm going to give it my best shot. So that is another thing that you'll probably see on the next podcast. Um, I feel like the next podcast I have, I'm gonna have way too many works in progress and I'm gonna be like overwhelmed by it. Alas, such is life. So that's pretty much it. I feel sort of like flat today. Maybe I haven't drank enough water. That's probably it. But I don't have anything else besides my shop update, which is pretty gigantic. I've already sold a couple things, but I will show you. So if anyone's interested, I have a shop on Etsy. It's Tiny Human, it's on Etsy. I sell a little bit hand-dyed yarn. Um, I, I have a feeling my hand-dyed yarn portion is always going to be a bit more of a hobby. I guess it's all a hobby. But I don't see myself as becoming some great, like, yarn dyer that's going to sell out in half an hour when they do an update. Like, I don't think that's ever going to happen. But, I do try. So, I have a couple skeins of yarn in. I'll show you those first. So I've already shown you uh, Victoria, so I've got two skeins of that in the shop. Um, I also have another skein of Millennial Green and Autumn Fog, and that's on my Christmas or my holiday base as well. And then I've got, this one is called Confetti, I've got two of these. This is on the Silver Stellina base. Um, I have got page 394, I've got quite a few of these. And because this base is a bit different from my last base, it does take up dye a lot stronger, so the colors are a little bit deeper. But I've got a lot of that. And because my husband loves this colorway so much, I actually kept one for myself. And this is what it looks like in the skein. Or in the ball. Cake? Sure. And I'm going to be making him some socks of this. So that's what it looks like. And then I also have my, uh, my greatest uh, achievement, I think, right now, <laughs> is Sugar Cookie. So I've got quite a few of these in the shop. And uh, they're all on Silver Stellina. I think I put, I think there's six left in the shop. And I'm thinking I might do a couple on um, just the 7525 with no Stellina in case some people don't particularly like the feeling of the Stellina. Although there is only 5%, so it's not a whole lot. It's just enough to give it a little bit of glimmer. And if anyone is wondering, this is what Sugar Cookie knits up like. This is my pair of socks in Sugar Cookie. This is, doesn't have Stellina in it. But I'll be making a pair with Stellina in it for my cousin Jennifer for Christmas, so I will be able to see what it looks like with that. So that is the yarn I have in the shop, and I also have a bunch of project bags. My favorite project bags, which is the shawl, it's like a medium large size, uh, big enough for a shawl or fingering weight sweater, or like six pairs of socks if you are so inclined. So I have got a bunch of these, they're all a little bit different, and I've done separate listings, they're all fully lined, I've done separate listings for all of them, I know it might look weird, but I don't like putting where you can click on an option on Etsy, I want you to know exactly which one you're getting, so each different listing will have the front, it's not really a front and back, one side, and the other side, 
and then the lining and uh, what zipper color it is. Because I don't, I don't want to be confusing. So I've got that one. This one. These ones are some of my favorite. I'm surprised I haven't stolen one yet. My self-control is getting better. And they've all got a six inch boxed bottom, so it's plenty of space. They stand up on their own really well. And they're all interfaced with a thick fleecy lining or interfacing. So they're really squishy as well. I've also got these. I've had this one and Another one, which apparently I didn't bring with me. <laughs> uh, this type of style uh, before, and I sold them immediately, so I thought I'd get another charm pack and make some more. Oh, goodness gracious, it's right here. Oh, I don't know where my head is right now. I also have one rainbow one. And then I also made these two Christmas bags. I don't I don't want to overfill with Christmas stuff because I know some people don't celebrate Christmas and um, getting a Christmas bag is always kind of tough because you can only really use it for two months out of the year unless you're like me and you use your Christmas bag 100% of the year but I made two bags with this beautiful Christmas fabric this one is still in the shop and I line them with one of my favorite lining fabrics which is this knit almost Christmassy knit fabric. Um, and then I also made this one. This one sold already. But I'm thinking I'll be putting some sock sacks in the shop in this fabric. So a bag just big enough. I was kind of imagining a sort of Toblerone shape bag where it's kind of triangular. Um, just enough to fit a cake of yarn, your needles, and just a small notion pouch in. Um, but I will see how that goes because I do have plenty of this fabric left. So let me know what you think about that. And I might do it anyway because then I have a bunch of sock bags for myself. <laughs> Not that I need them. I really don't. And I also have an absolute bunch of Knit Notions pouches. I've got, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, eleven different styles. So... They all have their hand cross-stitched front panel. I've started using this uh, label as well. They'll all come with a zipper pull. There's no guarantee about what kind of zipper pull is on there, but they all have one. And this is the back. And then the lining. They all have a um, sort of festive lining type situation. But I also have that one. That's the back. And then I have a couple that aren't Christmassy related. This one's just nice pink with my favorite flowers on the back. And this one's just a nice minty one with nice floral backing. Then I've got a couple more Christmas ones. This one's kind of Christmas, kind of just Canadian. So if you're into that. And this one makes me think of uh, Amy from the Stranded Podcast because cats. And then there's this one. Oop. That also has this poinsettia fabric on the back. This one's one of my favorites. It's kind of Gryffindor. Kind of Christmas, kind of Gryffindor. It's got that beautiful burgundy fabric on the back. And then the last one, which is actually, I think it might be my favorite. Um, I ended up making more of this one than any of the others. Most because it's like Naked Santa doing his stuff. Oh, it's got a little snowman. And those are all in my shop. So I've got, I think, 22 pouches right now in the shop. Um, make great Christmas presents. And they're just fun. They're really fun. 
I also have some of the Murderino pouches still left in the shop. I've got one more of the flowery one. That's my favorite. I adore this pouch. This one I kept because I had made it too shallow, but I love it. Anyway, toot my own horn here. So that is my shop update. I hope everyone can check it out. And um, I always feel like I'm reminding people, shipping gets crazy weird at Christmas time. So if you're worried about things arriving on time, order early, just in case. <laughs> so I need to go scoop out more snow off my deck so I can melt it and um, just, I don't even wanna drink it. I should probably go into town and get some water bottles. <laughs> Is what I should do. I'm just really hoping our water truck comes today. But besides that, I'm finally taking a little bit of time for my own projects and just chilling out. I'm probably going to be doing a little bit more sewing. I feel like I'm missing talking about stuff. I don't have any acquisitions as far as I can recall. Oh, I did buy uh, with my... I put in a nitpicks order a while ago and I kind of forgot to mention it, but I ordered to... Um, two 32 inch uh 2.25 millimeter sock needles i can't remember which ones because i'm not very familiar with nitpick sock needles and i decided i was going to make like emergency project bags and uh put them both in my vehicle and my husband's vehicle so i had leftover project bags that i had from a while ago they're like really old ones so i i grabbed a skein i think of croy sock yarn in each one and just stuck them in there with my um my nitpicks needles and just like put them in the um glove compartment just in case you never know Especially in the winter, you might get stranded. You might, and then what if I don't have enough projects with me for like stuck in the ditch somewhere? So I said, it's a good idea. Another thing I forgot last time I had my acquisitions uh, section. I got two books when we were in Edmonton last. So I bought one, and this was a really fun gift, and I think everyone is buying this book right now, but I got myself the Alternate Stitch Dictionary. And I think it is beautiful and I am so excited. I kind of wanted to design some mittens for myself out of some of these patterns in here because I think they're so adorable. But I bought that one for myself. But my beautiful friend Elise gave me a present from the new yarn store in Edmonton. And she got me Lane Magazine. And this is issue three. And I want to make everything in it. So excited by it. Like, look at that. It's beautiful. Seriously, I th maybe next year I should do a knit along of just Knit Lane Magazine. <laughs> That'd be crazy. I probably wouldn't do that because I'd, I'd fail miserably, but. Or maybe knit something from Lane Magazine. That'd be fun. Oh, speaking of knit alongs though, because I feel like I've come to the point where I've nearly have, I nearly have enough yarn for you know, if we got snowed in for a few years, I'd probably be fine. But I was thinking of starting a knit along on January 1st, where you knit from your stash, and it can't be anything you buy into your stash. It has to be anything you got for, like, from the last year. Although, I am considering starting it on January 4th, because with all... My whole life, I've never counted New Year's resolutions until January 4th. Because my birthday is the 3rd of January, so I feel like if I start a New Year's resolution on the 1st, I can't really do anything. Like, if I get yarn for my birthday, I'd rather have it in my stash for the new long. So, I think maybe January 4th... Oh my goodness, January 4th, I'll start um, uh, knit along for knitting from your stash. And then I'll do the same as I've been doing with my sweater knit along where I'll probably draw prizes from the chatter thread as it goes along and then at the end have a grand prize. And I was thinking of running that for six months into the summer and just kind of just for me to knit from what I've got and not buy anymore because especially when I start working again I don't want all my money to go to yarn again. I love it but it's unnecessary so I have so much. I've got so many sweater quantities that I need to work through. But let me know if you're interested in that, and I will give that a uh, page and start it up as soon as possible, actually, because then you can start sharing what stash you would like to use. And maybe, you know, Christmas time, buy some more stash, fourth and it along. 
whatever you like, but I think it would be a good way to get everyone to knit from what they've got instead of buying more, because I know a lot of people have a problem with buying a lot of yarn and then having it sit in your house for a long time. So let me know what you think about that and I will start that up. I'll probably start it anyway, just because I need my own motivation and this podcast is a really good way to get myself motivated for stuff, for everything really. But I think that's all I have to talk about. I'm going to go do a workout, I think important to keep yourself healthy. If you're sitting for long periods of time, just do some stretches, even if it sucks. But I want to go do that and then try to clean my house with no water. So I hope everyone is having a wonderful uh, start to winter or start to spring and summer in some parts of the world, which is always weird to me, but ah, oh, yes. hope you're all having a lovely time and I will see you next time. So thank you so much for watching and have a fabulous day. Bye!